He said, better be important. Yes, sir. The American agent has infiltrated the X lab facility. Welcome back. everybody doing back to the combat footage show my name is ronnie i'll be your host to the like button drop a comment i know i know here we go everybody from come on what's going on he knows this is his birthday it's not my birthday stop it stop it coming. from vegas how are you montreal what's up australia north pole davos that's cool uh no i didn't have a job interview Detroit, how are you? Welcome back to the Combat Footage Show. Um, you know, once again, I'm Ronnie. I'll be your host. Uh, please do, though, continue to drop a comment in the chat, or if you're watching on the VOD, I want to talk for a second about the VOD because we've been continuing to have a few issues with YouTube, and I think it's important to note when we have these issues that I kind of cover those um, because, to be honest with you, the majority of the folks that watch, um, I call this a show, but it's really this footage review, do so after it's live, right? Anytime I play something that has music on it, what ends up happening is we get a YouTube copyright claim under most circumstances. Now, what we then have to do to keep the video up is use YouTube's editor to remove that uh, specific audio from that section. When we do that, YouTube shuts down the live chat review. So if you're, if you're going back in time and you're watching previous shows uh, and you don't see a live chat, it's likely because there was uh, you know, some music in there, and we had to use YouTube's tools to cut that music out. That way, the copyright claim could fall off of the channel. But it's good to see you. Welcome back. Uh, we're gearing up for SHOT Show next week, so this will be our last stream until the week following. There won't be any streams next week. Uh, it'll just be tonight. I almost had to cancel tonight because of some nasty weather that we got. For some reason, I, anytime it snows, the internet goes all weird. Uh, so there's a chance that that could cause issues tonight, but here we are. Uh, we're going to be covering a lot of stuff tonight. We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the Pakistan-Iran situation, as the thumbnail indicates. But don't don't worry, it's all cool. It's all good, I guess, apparently. But we'll cover that here in just a second. We'll see some footage from Israel. Uh, I actually am seeing less and less combat footage be, being published from Israel, from Israel po proper, from you know, the third-party accounts that we typically find it from, uh, even the Telegram sources. Hamas is continuing to publish footage, and we'll see a couple releases from them tonight. But we're going to take a look at Ukraine as well, with a little bit of an update on Avdivka and some of the you know, pretty big updates that are coming out of Avdivka, namely Russian advances into or near into the city. But let's get started. Uh, I want to share with you guys uh, just a quick bit of this footage. Some footage from Iranian drones of the Baluchi gymnast team. So, uh, I, you know, I'm being a little bit funny about this, but what you're looking at here was re is footage that was released by Iran as, you know, something of a justification. Oh, and just in case you missed that, there you go. Those are really clean uh, cartwheels there. This was released. This is footage released by Iran that was effectively their justification for targeting the Jaish ul Adil group uh, in Balochistan in southwestern Pakistan. Uh, towards the end of this video, we're not going to watch all of it because it it really honestly is just them watching these guys ride around on motorcycles, do a little bit of training here and there, so some B-roll training. Um. 
towards the end of it is where it starts to show some of those strikes, or at least what is reported to be those strikes. Now, some of the damage that we see in this didn't nece wasn't necessarily reflective of the BDA that was conducted or that was found uh, in imagery at the locations Iran claimed to strike. In fact, the damage seems quite small in this, and there was a massive amount of destruction in a relative sense in some of those photos that were published from Iran strikes into Pakistan. Now, Pakistan said, hold the F on a second. You're not going to do that to me. I'm going to kick off Operation Margbar Sarmanchar. I can't say it with a straight face. I'm sorry, I tried. Operation Margbar Sarmachar. I'm not kidding. I, I'll, I'll, I'll prove that here in a second. Here is Operation... <laughs> this is Pakistan launching missiles into Iran. I gotta, and I gotta go and grab. I, I have proof. Mark Bar Sarmachar exists. I gotta go get it from my Twitter because I didn't, I didn't save the link. So stand by, uh, everybody. Thank you for being here. Do tap the like button. Let me go grab this from Twitter really quick. Uh, effectively, Mark Bar Sarmachar stands for uh, Death to Guerrilla Fighters. So let me pull this up here. Talk amongst yourselves. Give me a second. Give me a second. I, you know, like I mentioned, at one point I had stopped compiling for the show tonight. There it is, right there. Uh, copy image link. It's coming up for you now. Operation Margbar Sarmachar. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Um, here it is. Uh, it's a it's a really long and drawn out justification for the strikes that Pakistan took into, uh, and this is obviously a translated version of um, Pakistan's statement that they made. Uh, it, a long, drawn-out justification for the strikes that they took into southern Iran, also into Balochistan. Now, understanding that I put up a thumbnail that says something akin to Pakistan swings back and, you know, uh, effectively, the two nations have now come together and uh, they are all good. Like, quite honestly, that's exactly what happened. That's what That's the reporting that hit the ground. They came to the negotiating table and said, hi, we're friends again. So uh, if war between Pakistan and Iran was on your bingo card and you had that marked, you need to now pull that off of your bingo card because it's not going to happen. Mark Bars Sarmachar. <laughs> is what it is, man. You know, I, I practice saying that like repeatedly uh, and, and, and was really hoping I was going to be able to say it with a straight face. But let's move on. Uh, we're going to be sliding into Iraq. Um, yeah, that's coming up here in just a second. Uh, checking in on the support, and thank you guys for it. Sean, thank you very much for the 21 months, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, 12 Yako for 21 months. Wow. Uh, Ron. Not me. Ron Bevins. Thank you very much for the 19 months. Uh, Nils for 10 months. Uh, Vazinator. 10 months and BH. Thank you for the nine months. Now, sliding out of Mark, Mark Bar Sarmachar, an MQ 9, a Reaper, was shot down over Baghdad. I'm not going to say anything about this footage. I'm going to play it and I'm going to monitor the chat uh, and then I'm going to prove you wrong. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, so so here's the deal. Everybody caught, that caught this footage, the initial reaction was there's not a chance that this is an MQ-9, um, a Reaper. Largely because of this that we're seeing here. Uh, this has absolutely zero res resemblance to the nose cone of a Reaper. 
we're going to take a look at some photos here. Some photos from on the ground. Let's see which one I have lined up for us first. Ah, here is some footage from the wreckage. I'd like you to pay attention to this piece of it here with this. Note this little light housing there. Almost looks like a winglet. Well, that goes here. This is a Reaper. Uh, there are, you know, multiple variations of Reaper. But that winglet that you just saw there, uh, reportedly from the wreckage, goes here on the Reaper. What you are seeing there is actually an extended range fuel tank that can be attached to the bottom of the Reaper to give it additional range. But people saw this and said, that's not a Reaper. It looks nothing like it. Not a chance in hell. Uh, it, it got shot down, plainly. But does that matter? Uh, well, yeah, it matters. It's like $30 million worth of gear. Of course it matters. But is that not what that's for? That is ultimately the argument that you're seeing across social media right now. Is On the one hand, you'll see comments, everything from the empire is continuing to fall because we lost another drone uh, or because the U.S. lost another drone. On the other uh, that's quite literally what unmanned aircraft are for, is to be the things that get shot down so personnel don't. It's still $30 million worth of equipment that got shot down uh, shortly after taking off from Kuwait over Baghdad. All right, let's move on from Iraq. Our Reaper? Correct. That is a United States Reaper. 100%. Yes, an MQ-9 Reaper. Excuse me if I didn't clarify that out of the gate. All right. Look, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry. Wow. I'm going to jump into the footage from Israel now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Coming up for you. Let's take a look at the map. We'll spend quite a bit of time up near Lebanon. And I actually kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about Lebanon than we normally do. So, one of the things that Israel is continuing to warn the international community of is a potential, if actions aren't taking to slow down, quell, or stop Hezbollah targeting Israel, um, that Israel will start to take military action to push Hezbollah off of uh, Lebanese Hezbollah, excuse me. Uh, then you also have like, the reason I, I, I clearly define Lebanese Hezbollah is there are other Hezbollahs in the world, like there is a Hezbollah in Iraq, there's, so um, Israel is, I, I wouldn't say threatening, but warning of additional military action, uh, additional military incursion into Lebanon to push Hezbollah off of Israel's borders. Now, Let's take a look at some of the footage. Here are, and I actually don't want to cover that one just yet. We're going to start on the coast over by Rosh Hanikra. I'll show you guys where that's at in a second. There were rockets fired towards Rosh Hanikra from these guys, but they're probably not going to do that again. From a proximity perspective to the Lebanese border, you're looking at uh, under a kilometer, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we'll, we'll head over to Google Earth and pull up that location for you. I don't have an exact location on where the strike itself took place, but we can pull up the kibbutz itself. So 
stand by. Let's get Google Earth going here. And here we go. Very close proximity to the Lebanese border. Right on the coast. I wouldn't even say that's a kilometer. What, what, what is that? Mm, no, 0.2 kilometers. No, that, we're on miles. One of these days I'll get this. 0.36. So very close. But presumably the rockets were fired from, you know, somewhere in Lebanese territory. Hezbollah territory. Additional strikes from Israel onto Hezbollah positions took place here. Got two locations here. This location was an ATGM launch site. And here. Wish it would stop doing that spinny thing. It's, it makes me dizzy every time it does it. Stop. Nope. There. That footage. It's coming up for you now. Uh, London Water, thank you very much for the five. Hiya. Now, the second strike, the second location there, the only note that Israel published with that footage was that it was a, quote, threat identified. Uh, this one, in, in a similar fashion, was only reported as, quote, infrastructure. Well, it was. Also in Lebanon. Big boom. We're going to move into the West Bank here, and specifically into Nablus. Go to Google Earth. Here. This exact location, in fact. Israel conducted a strike against what is effectively the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, their commander for the Balada refugee camp. His name was Abdullah Abu Shalal. He was hit with a crew of his, I don't know, folks, while driving in a vehicle. We'll take a look at the footage of that, and then we'll see some aftermath footage of the vehicle as well. Coming up now. Here's a little bit of aftermath footage. We don't have anything close, but you will see the response uh, from both the Red Crescent and from what appears to be the IDF. <coughs> Something to make note of is listen to the sound on this one. Uh, what, it sounds like what, you, what would appear to me as uh, ammunition cooking off in the fire. Now, based on, based on some of the other reports that I was reading, let's get to a pause point here. Based on some of the other reports from locals that were in the area, 
Uh, the IDF effectively got there just kind of seconds before, and you can see that in the video. The Red Crescent did took over the scene for about a half an hour and removed uh, the bodies that were in this you know wreckage that was just hit uh, from the air. At least one of which showed up at a West Bank hospital or Nablus hospital sometime later. Now, I wanted to share with you guys who exactly he was. I don't have a great video that kind of describes him as an individual, but this is a recent interview that he conducted that I could find that was translated for you. So this is Abdullah Abu Shalal. Again, the uh, one of the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, Brigade commanders. Coming up now. عبد الله بشلال بنادم عادي زي زي بنادم حر شريف برضاش بالظلم بحب يعيش حر انا بنادم برضاش اعيش دليل تحت اي ظرف من الظروف جيش احتلال بيطاهد فينا باي شكل كل يوم بيجي بقتل بذبح بهدم بغير حق وهم اللي محتلين هم اللي جايين علينا محتلين مش احنا اللي جايين عليهم يتناول عبد الله Let's bring it back up. Abdullah. Okay, Abdullah. Checking in on the support. Peter, thank you very much for becoming a Funker. Welcome. Uh, appreciate that very much. Todd, thank you for the $15. $15. Thank you. Uh, my grandson, Elijah, says hello. Hello, Elijah. I hope Elijah uh, isn't watching the stream. Just, just going to put that out there. Well, let's move forward. We're going to move into Gaza. We'll see a couple releases from Hamas. And like I kind of told you guys when we started the show tonight, I have less footage from Israel than we normally do. We, we have quite a, quite a wide uh, Ukraine section, so I think we'll still end up going most of the hour and a half. But our Israel section, uh, our Gaza section, is not as long as it normally is. This is one of Hamas's latest release. In fact, at the time I tweeted this, which would have been 11 o'clock this morning, it was the latest release from Hamas. It's going to show them watching an IDF soldier troop walk into a hole in the wall, and then there's a cut in the video, and then they fire a rocket at it. I just spoiled the whole video for you. Here you go. I have no idea what the time between those was. Now, the next video is a little bit more impactful from Hamas. Uh, what we're going to see here is effectively a compilation of rocket attacks at what I would say is ex some pretty extreme close quarters against various pieces of armor, everything from the Namer um, armored personnel carriers to Merkavas. I mean, some of this stuff is real, real close. Lots of Doritos in this one, though. Here you are. Don't have a location for this because effectively, like I said, it is, you know, uh, a compilation release from them. I did want to point some of these out. I mean, at this distance, guys, you know, we, we talk a lot about the trophy. <clears throat> Nobody really knows the, the uh, effective range of the trophy from how close you can be. Uh, but from that distance, you know, A, I don't think that 
trophy system is going to engage. Don't take my word for that. I'm not an expert on the trophy system. It's just my thoughts. I'm giving you an opinion here. But B, I, I also wonder about the arming distance of the RPG here as well. Um, it would be less applicable on the strike on the Merkava there. I want to say that arming distance on the RPG is going to be, what is it, like 10 meters uh, where you have the booster that, that'll then ignite. But that's something that that's a question that I get a lot is, you know, what are the numbers of vehicle losses? You'll have um, you know, numbers that are published by Hamas, um, you know, by Palestinian sources that's in the thousands. Uh, Israel has actually not talked at all about how many vehicles they've lost. The only the only tracked loss that I can that I can find specifically from Israel uh, are killed in action. And I think we're in the 500s since the 7th. So that's only since the 7th, and that is inclusive of those that are IDF that were killed uh, on the 7th as well. I'm going to pause here for a second and check in on the support because we're done with our Israel section for the night, and it's already, we've only been live for about 25 minutes. Uh, Mission Your Mom, thank you for the $10. Been with you uh, since the live firefight at the power plant. That, I'll never forget that night. I, I could not, for the life of me, understand why people were shooting guns at a nuclear power plant. I uh, still don't understand it. Yeah, maybe that's just me. Uh, London Water, thank you for the $50. Appreciate that very much. Uh, Robert, thank you for the $10, sir. And thank you guys for being here. We're going to be jumping into our um, Ukraine section here in a second. We're actually going to be starting in Russia. So let's pull up Deep State. Mm, no, we're actually gonna we're gonna stay in Google Google Earth because we got to go all the way up to Bryansk. To this facility, it's an oil depot. Well, according to reports and according to video, Ukrainian drones hit this oil depot. Set it ablaze. Video's coming up now. Hot, 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 hot. Yep. Now, there was uh, some additional footage I was actually looking for, and this is where I'm going to ask for you guys' help. There was supposedly a cross-border raid uh, into, I don't know, Belgorod, that there is an image floating around. Now, we've seen a couple examples of this. We've seen, you know, Spetsnaz and the ambush of like, the Ural trucks, uh, we've seen one from the Ichkarian Chechens and some of their raids into Russia. Well, supposedly it's happened again, and there's a screenshot floating around. I didn't copy it for the, for the stream tonight of an ambush on another Ural truck. Uh, if you guys find that, the video, not necessarily the screenshot because I've already seen it. Tag me in it, please. I searched for it for like an hour earlier today, but only the screenshot is what's floating around right now. That would have been the other item I wanted to cover in Russia. But we're going to slide down to Pearson. Let's take a look at Deep State. So Deep State, we're going to talk about a little bit more, uh, and we'll, we'll spend more time on this map once we get over to the Avdivka area. But we'll see a little bit of footage tonight from the left bank. We're not going to be starting in the left bank. I actually have some footage from the right bank. But we'll see an update from Crinky. And a uh, 
we'll see a really interesting one from Crinky. Let me let me just put it that way. From here, we're basically going to jump right over to Avdivka and spend quite a bit of time there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine videos over in Avdivka. And then we'll round things out in Luhansk. And then I have a general section for us. But the first thing I wanted to show you is a Max Pro somewhere on the right bank of Hearson that gets hit by a Russian drone dropped grenade. Um, and it just disintegrates the Max Pro. But there's a catch. It has a Miklik on the back of it, a mine clearing line charge, a nope rope. Basically, a big long rope uh, of explosives that gets fired out in a line and clears mines. You guys have seen the UR-77. Uh, we've seen the Miklik in action. Well, that Miklik is about to blow up. Show the Bradley smacking a T-90. Uh, we covered that Friday, but we may or may not have uh, some updated footage for that tonight. And it's gone. It's difficult to tell if it was occupied at the time. It did look like it was, you know, possibly running. Once we get to the end here, we'll pull up uh, the beginning of the video. It looked to me almost as though got some exhaust there uh, you know it's definitely a disabled in some way you know this smoke coming off of it i don't know if that's the result of maybe an fpv strike or if that's you know from the engine that is a vent there i believe it's been a while since i've been in a, in a max pro but it doesn't appear to be occupied that said, it's gone now. Let's move from that one. I've got a Ukrainian boat team here. This is actually going to lead us into the following video. This is a Ukrainian boat team, presumably trying to make their way over. Uh, they're either patrolling or trying to make their way to that bridgehead in Krinky. Well, they're going to get hit by a drone strike here. This Again, this is going to be a segue, if you will, into the next video that we're going to watch. Now, there's something of an, was, something of an infamous Russian drone operator. He went by the name Moses. Russia claims that he was the result of, well, he was the catalyst or the cause of something like 500 Ukrainian casualties and 30 boats that have been hit in the Kherson area. Well, Ukrainian drone operators found him. Uh, which has been confirmed by Moses's wife on Telegram, Russian Telegram, as well as claimed by Ukrainians. This is the strike that reportedly killed the infamous Moses, Russian drone operator. I have an exact location for it that I'll pull up here in a second. I'm going to give you guys a link. If you'd like more information about this strike, go and check this thread out. It's going to be war translated. The link is also in the stream description. But it provides a little bit more fidelity on those Telegram posts, Russian Telegram acknowledging that um, 
you know, that Moses was killed in action, uh, as well as a little bit uh, more information on, you know, what he was responsible for, according to Russia. Let's move to Evdivka from here. Uh, we've got an update on some T90 footage. So last Friday, uh, during in the midst in the middle of the show, somebody said, "Are you going to cover the the T90 getting destroyed by the Bradley?" And I said, uh, "Excuse me, what are you talking about? I I was not aware of this footage." Well, we watched it then, uh, and it has since kind of become a meme, and I'll prove that here in a second. But additional angles and footage are starting to kind of emerge. And we're going to talk about one of the challenges that comes along with that, especially when the angle looks like this and is so much more clear than the original footage. These are 25 millimeter impacts on a T90M in Stepova to the immediate northwest of Evdivka. Now, this version of the video went much more viral than the last. Uh, the last, if you guys recall from the Friday show, it was really grainy. It was hard to make out exactly what was happening. And because of that, there is there has been a ton of pushback on what exactly happened to this T90M. Well, this T90M ultimately gets damaged to an extent that removes it from the fight by these two Bradleys. There are actually two, and they have it caught in an L shape right now. So there is one that is uh, hitting it from the bottom of your screen when you're watching it on the other footage, and there's another that's hitting it from the extreme right. What ends up happening to it is this. From the Bradley fire. I warn you, this is about to be stuck in your head, and I'm sorry for using a meme, but I can't stop watching this. Is what it is, guys. <laughs> That's f***ing mesmerizing. You know, I, I don't meme the show. You know, I try and present the stuff as straight down the middle as possible. I, it, but I, I can't stop watching that. And I get, it, it makes it a little bit easier. The crew survives. That's important to note. The crew survives at the end of this. The T90 has been taken out of action at this point. I would like to, you know, give props to whomever put this absolutely perfect meme together. What ends up happening is it crashes into a tree. And we're going to actually see it again here in just a second. Uh, and the crew dismounts. But then the T90 is destroyed by an FPV drone. Right? We, we receive the biggest... We received the biggest pushback on this one on Instagram. There are a lot of people that still haven't seen the original part of this footage. Now, let me show you some more updated Bradley footage. Let me show you some updated Bradley footage uh, sometime after that engagement. Coming up for you now, and we're actually going to see that T90M in its resting place. I want to say there's music on this one. Uh, it's, it, it's hard to understand what they're firing at, but it's important to note that they are firing east right now. So we are looking west. They are firing east. I'm going to pause this here in just a second. Right, ah, uh, come back. Baby, come back. Right there. Right here in the upper right of your screen is that T90M. Ronnie, why are you, why are you showing me that? Because again, 
the only version that the majority of people have seen on this Bradley versus T90 footage is the version of it that's up close, that is sexy to watch, that is a lot of explosions and sparks and stuff flying off of it, but doesn't give a great understanding of what exactly happened. Well, why does that matter? It doesn't. It, it, it quite honestly doesn't. Because ultimately, the Bradley is a tank killer. It, it is doing exactly what it's designed to do. The gravity of it is good job. That's what it's there for. I've already seen the comments now, though. Why are, why are folks still talking about this? Why is this something, you know, uh, they're never going to let this down? Yeah, well, we've seen the same Zaporizhia screen capture of Bradley's after hitting mines now for the last, like, six months. I've actually seen it in response to some of this Bradley footage, right? There's always two sides to that coin. The Bradley ultimately was the cause, uh, maybe not the final cause, but was ultimately the cause of that T-90 being taken out of the fight. Us working through each in individual part of this footage is really just to help those who haven't seen each section of it understand that. All right, let's pause for a second because there's a lot of support coming in. We got a lot more FDF could go through, though. Uh, JD, thanks very much for the $100, sir. Get a haircut. I just did. Thank you for the hundred dollars. That's a lot of that's a lot of dollars. Uh, Auntie Kane, thank you for coming to Funker. Uh, welcome. Uh, Mission your mom. Thank you for the ten dollars again. London Water, thank you again for the fifty. Thank you guys. All right, let's head back to the map. Uh, we're gonna go to Google Earth, and we can also take a look at Svetova while we're there. All right. We're headed here. Uh, where we're going to see an FPV drone slapping on a tank. But just for a little bit of clarity on what you were just looking at, that Bradley footage was the Bradley, you know, moving back and forth down this road, firing towards Russian positions over here. One of those positions was, was or at one of those positions was, a Russian T-72 B-3. Here. It's already been abandoned uh, or disabled in some way. But this FPV drone pops the turret and keeps it from being recovered and used sometime later. I wanted to give you guys some of that context footage because we've talked a lot about Avdivka and we're going to we're going to talk about it a little bit more here in a second. But we're going to head over to Avdivka Main. So the city of Avdivka itself rather than Stepova where we've seen a lot of uh the Bradley footage. But let's head to to Deep State for a second here. Uh which button am I looking for? That's the button we want right there. Deep State is reporting uh, a relative breakthrough on the southeastern edge, up into this row of houses. I have yet to see the footage that it, that accompanies that, uh, but it's being, there's something of a consensus of reporting that Russia has, you know, at least in a small amount with you know some small teams, gained a foothold in the actual city, town, village, Avdivka's not small, of Avdivka. I wanted to show you, though, what Avdivka looks like today. Well, within the last couple days, at least. Here is some of that context footage of Avdivka. Keeping the sound off on that. All right, now let's bring it back up. Uh, Doggy, thank you for the 556. Five, Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> at this point, you know, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Uh, 
Might as well be Valentine's Day. Um, Spartan, no negative. Thank you for the $10, sir. London Water, thank you for the five. Bradley, hey, Bradley, we need you over here. Uh, yeah, thank you for thank you for the five. Appreciate that very much, guys. Uh, I, I did want to note for the asshole that might be reading that left a comment on the VOD for us to stop thanking people for sending in, you know, dollars. Uh, no. Yeah, so never going to do that, right? I, this stream's free, and uh, your generosity is above and beyond expectations. I will always uh, pause whatever the, whatever the f*** I'm doing and say thank you for sending in a few dollars because it's not expected. Stream's free. Uh, the only thing I will ask you to do uh, beyond just watch is hit the like button and drop a comment in the chat because those are free ways to support the stream. So thank you guys. I appreciate you very much. We all do. Let's move on though. Uh, Ivanivsky. Ivanivsky. This is mm, discretion advice on this one. What we're going to see here is a really brutal. I might ruin the live chat on this one. There are a few circumstances where the music provides context. You know, sometimes, uh, if you recall some of the K2 footage when they were releasing that, some of that music really provided, I, I don't want to say ambiance, but I want it, I, I, maybe a feeling, right? We're going to play the music that's been aligned against this. And if it does end up taking the live chat away, I'm sorry. But what you're going to see here on the outskirts of Bakhmut, and we can pull up Bakhmut and I can show you exactly where this would be. On the outskirts of Bakhmut, somewhere along this front, was this brutal drone compilation. It's pretty brutal. It's coming up for you now. Uh, it's about a four minute watch.
Let's bring it up. I think you understand why I said I wanted to play the music for that one. I uh, need to check in on the support, though, and thank you guys very much for it. I want to pause here for, for just a moment. Love the stream as always. Marcus, thank you for the 1256. Uh, to be honest, getting a little nervous with all the talk of NATO, Europe being eventually pulled into conflict with Russia, exclamation point. Uh, absolutely inundated with news reports about it. Yeah, those same news reports have been going on for, uh, you know, two years now, right? Uh, and that is one of uh, one of the ones that Russia has continued to impress upon people. I'm a big fan of reading the Institute for the Study of War. That starts to get into a topic surrounding geopolitics, and that's not really a specialty of mine. I'm, you know, I'm not a geopolitical expert. I end up with some level of understanding of, you know, the geopolitics surrounding war and the process of documenting what's happening on the ground. That's where my focus stays. But the Institute for the Study of War has talked about some of the primary themes and narratives that Russia wants the West to talk about, one of which is ultimately uh, the something being the catalyst of the next world war. Because what that does is ultimately um, chip away at any Western support. It is quite definitively the definition of fear-mongering. Now, that's not me saying that we're not getting closer to that. Because again, that's a that's a large large brain question on a small brain budget, if you will. For me, and the and what I end up seeing is I see these reports day in and day out. I see the comments and statements across social media as I'm compiling this stuff. And I'd like to remind you that one of the things that will be most consumed are things that are scary. Those are the things that, from an algorithm's perspective, uh, and most media are going to take advantage of this. But from an algorithm's perspective, fear is going to spread fastest. Social media uh, and the media companies that take advantage of this uh, quite literally are going to tell you that you are drowning. Uh, it's by design. Uh, it's the way algorithms work. When in fact, you might technically be drowning, but that's because these companies, these algorithms are holding your head in two inches of water. I don't know how close we are to something like that. I don't. My function and focus is really about trying to understand the situation as it, as it is on the ground. Do I think we are closer than we were two years ago? Certainly. Do I think it's imminent? No, I don't. Do I have any basis or um, data to support that? No. No, I don't. That's a feeling. I'm giving you opinion. I try not to do too much of that, but that's mine. Thank you very much for the 1256. Uh, Theocracy, thank you very much for the $10. Uh, might you play the Spirit Tour one more time? Probably. I can't stop watching it. I, I don't, I try, not, I really, really honestly try not to meme the show. I, that's one of the reasons you, I, I have told you guys before that at any given time, I will piss 100% of you off. That's one of the reasons that I don't associate very much with like the NAFO movement. Uh, there's too many memes about war and in often, oftentimes, and I can understand it, right? Especially coming from Eastern Europe. Uh, but, but oftentimes I try, I do my best to avoid that stuff. That one, that one got me. That one got me hard, like really hard. I don't hold anybody's, you know, views or opinions or what they want to laugh at against them. The, sp with the spinny turret one i just <laughs> we'll probably watch it again thank you very much uh Har harbinger thank you very much for the five dollars the bradley videos are cool but i want to see the, the interpretive range dance you bragged about on x uh that's only fans content you can't have that yet andrew thank you for the 99 cents appreciate it uh discretion advised on this next one as well we're going to have what was reported to be a Ukrainian, quote, border guard uh, using a thermal optic to engage two Russian soldiers somewhere near Bakhmut. Coming up now. Far from freedom, I see your question there. I'll respond to it. Bradley is a tank, Ronnie. Why are you yelling at me? I'm not arguing with you. Don't yell at me. Coming back up. 
Uh, the question... Where'd it go? I'll just read. I'll read from the chat. Any plans to cover war footage involving cartel wars in Mexico? We do cover um, cartel footage quite a bit, uh, especially on the website. Um, I've covered it here as well. Uh, when 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 we see a lot of it get getting published, uh, you know, just a few years ago there was, I, I shouldn't even say a few years ago. Just, uh, there's cartel footage every day. Um, we cover everything on the on the app and on the website what i try to cover you know here on the show is what i end up with time to research and provide context to right as it stands now i don't consider myself to be an expert in any of the you know regions conflict areas or wars that we cover i'm not a ukraine war expert uh, i have a pretty good understanding of what's happening on the ground based on solely on the footage um I'm not an expert on, you know, Israel-Hamas relations. I have a pretty good understanding of what's going on based on the footage. One that I personally have covered less is, is cartel stuff. Uh, but the guys, do we do archive it, we do document it, and when there are major developments, we do cover it. Uh, Mark Blue, thank you for the $5, sir. Let's move on to the next footage here. I, I don't... This one is reportedly, quote, unquote, a Bradley being hit by what appears to be an anti-tank guided missile. But in Bakhmut, uh, I have a couple questions about that. I want to show you the footage and then we'll talk about it. Something just got destroyed there. Here, here my, my question on this one, though. An overwhelming majority of the Bradleys were aligned against the 47th Brigade. The 47th Brigade uh, previously was in Zaporizhia. Uh, you know, we, we saw plenty of footage of them in Ukraine's attempts at the counteroffensive earlier on the, just this past year. I keep forgetting we're in 2024. But they have now been moved to the Avdivka area. That's why we're seeing a lot of Bradley footage from there. I haven't seen a whole lot of Bradley footage coming from Bakhmut. This was, you know, a pro-Russian kind of source that published that. It, it doesn't look like a Bradley. Uh, it doesn't not look like a Bradley. I would be hard-pressed to believe it is, though, given my understanding of where the Bradleys were aligned, once again, primarily the 47th Brigade, uh, and historical footage that we've seen from Bakhmut. Now, again, that... Something was destroyed here by a Russian anti-tank guided missile. I just don't think it was Bradley. Bring it up. We've got some official RT published footage here. Also some weird footage, but we'll talk about that after we, after we watch it. This is reported to show a Russian tank crew carrying out an operation to remove a, uh, I want to say they call it, temporary accommodation site of Ukrainians in the uh, Bakhmut front. So, it's interesting. Here's the footage. Okay, that's where it gets interesting to me. Um, whatever just hit that is... First of, first of all, let's kind of cover this from multiple directions here. We were watching a tank fire two rounds at this. Um, not saying that location isn't now gone, because it obviously is. It got hit by something. I just don't think it was a tank that did that. Uh, first of all, the tank fired two rounds, and the impact was from the top, and it was a single round. Um I'm not sure why you would say that that was a tank doing that when it's you know, quite apparent that it isn't. But then again, it is RT. So if I'm off base with that, you know, quick assessment of this, let me know. This was a very late addition to the show. It just came across my timeline. I watched it and uh, just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I'll pause here to actually check in on the chat and see what you guys think about it. Uh, Ariel, probably. Krasnopol. Looks like a fab. I mean, I don't have any frames here where I can see whatever's impacting. You could have kind of lobbed one, one 
from the tank into there. So either they missed with the second one because they were right after each other, those two rounds they fired. And they missed one of them. Uh, or they just slapped some B-roll tank footage on the destruction of this house. Well, there's a cut there. So, I don't know. I don't know. I just felt, I just thought that was weird. All right. Let's bring it back up. We are headed to Dubrova. I couldn't recall if we covered uh, some other footage I had from Dubrova, which is in Luhansk. Take you there on the map. Here. Ish. Uh, please orient north. I'm too stupid to track things if they're not oriented north. I had some other footage last stream to cover in Dubro Dubrova. This isn't that footage, but there, act there actually has been quite a bit of, quite a bit of footage coming from Dubrova. I'm going to try and pull that up on Deep State here if it wants to. Oh, it does. Nice. Oh, no, that's that's Bakhmut. That didn't work at all. Okay, let's just type it in. That's not it either. Anyway, here we are in Dubrova. Up in Luhansk, where we have another FPV versus a Russian tank. One of these days, I'll learn how to do my job. Coming up now. One of the reasons I kind of wanted to show this, because again, you know, I say we don't cover a lot of FPV stuff. You know, we're starting to, because that's really honestly what this is, what this war has turned into is war of the drones. They're starting to become very surgical from both directions on exactly where to hit these tanks and the, these armored vehicles, you know, right in that top back, just behind the turret area where the additional ammunition would be stored. to ultimately lead to the tank being destroyed. When are you guys going live with Speak the Truth, mate? I have, uh, I've had a couple, you know, nights of conversations with him. We've got some stuff planned. You know, nothing further on that at the moment. All right, we are moving on the map once again, though. So let's go back to the map. To here, not very far. We're actually going to see some footage of a BMP-3, a Russian BMP-3, just absolutely hammering a tree line until it doesn't. First time I watched this, I had no idea what happened. I thought it might have gotten hit by the Death Star or something. I just it just kind of blows up. Let's watch it again and see if you can pick out what happens. Oh, don't worry, I'm gonna give you the answer. You have to know that.
That's what happens when you fire an AR-15 at it. Mm -hmm. Or one of these. Once again, hit it in just the right spot with an FPV drone. All right, let's bring it back up. Moving on here to a general section in a moment. Again, they survive, guys. Like the the crew is alive in there. Okay, so I don't feel. <laughs> I want to know who made it because I came across it like a week ago, and I've been just sitting on it. I didn't share it. I didn't do anything with it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I mean, I'm not. I'm just saying. I wanted to give you an update on the Strikers. Uh, Will is a fan of the Strikers. Uh, and all the tracked guys in the comments are about to get, or about to, their heads are going to be huge right now. Here you are. Here is uh, a Striker in Ukraine. He's riding on donuts right now. Like the, you know, the little Debbie's donuts. That's what that looks like. Like chocolate ones. All right, let's bring it back up. Uh, I have another interesting one to watch here. Uh, this is this is one coming from the website. This is a sped up, so the 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 video is sped up, uh, probably two times, three times. It's not the greatest quality video. But it is an interesting video showing a mechanized assault on a trench, uh, kind of this macro view of Ukrainians taking somewhere. I don't know exactly where this takes place in Ukraine. We're already down into the general section for the show tonight. Um, but it provides a little bit of insight on how Ukraine is using their Ubers, their infantry fighting vehicles, armored personnel carriers. Interesting video. Here you are. So you see the second vehicle kind of following uh, close to exactly in the tracks of the first, uh, presumably so that if the first gets hit by, you know, mine of some kind, the second catches that. You're going to see dismounts from this vehicle moving to the far right side of this trench here. And establish, you know, uh, the L, the L, what would be the L shape with a base of fire from the two. I don't know if those would be BMPs. It's, it's hard for me to tell. But they're going to establish that base of fire, and then a follow, -up, and then another team is going to make their way over there, and then the vehicles are going to unask the location. And then the infantry will work to push down this trench line. Thought that one was interesting. Uh, okay. This next video we've watched 
situations like this kind of repeatedly, if you will, something to be reminded of. If you just being wounded uh, on the battlefield, uh, even when a part of an aid litter team does not necessarily make you less of a combatant. We are going to watch a Ukrainian aid and litter team targeted by an FPV drone. Uh, they do survive, uh, but surprisingly, uh, miraculously, they survive. Here is the footage. Oh, Кидай воду йому на ночь. Під ноги. Давай. Ноги сюди кинь. Давай, їсть. Да! There's a chance that that could have been like a mortar. That hit as well. Давай. Брата, доповзаш. Піра. Накидуй турнікети, ползи за нами. Давай, ти зможеш, дай ще глуток води. Так, я погнав. Сіра, за тебе верну. Давай, Гектор, пожалуйста. Давай, друзі. А, блядь. Ей, 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 ну що ж ти робиш? А можеш перекатись на Піра? Давай, тащи, блядь. Давай, що я, бо Піра. Alright. Now, the aid and litter team does survive. They do, according to the report, because that's the end of the video. They do end up evacuating that uh, casualty, according to the report. Uh, but that's something that gets talked about a lot is, you know, I can't believe they're targeting the wounded. Again, just being wounded doesn't make you less of a combatant, even if you are being transported by an aid and litter team. There are certain protections that are provided to clearly marked medics, or they are supposed to be provided. Uh, but, you know, doing TCCC on your buddy doesn't mean that you still can't be in receipt of a drone or in this case, what might have been a mortar. Uh, you don't hear the drone as it's coming in. Um, we've seen Russian aid and litter teams targeted that way. We've seen Ukrainian aid and litter teams targeted that way. One of those brutal realities, if you will. Uh, checking in on the support, and thank you guys once again for it. Uh, that's all I, I wish I was more eloquent in uh, saying thank you. Rad Doctor, thank you for the $5. Hit by the Death Star. It might as well have been the first time I watched that video. Uh, you know, he's speaking to the video of the, what was it, a BMP-3 firing on the tree line and it just explodes, you know, space lasers destroyed it or something. I don't know. And then I, then I came across the FPV strike and it made a whole lot more sense. Uh, Running Bear, thank you for the $2, sir. Appreciate it, buddy. Damn, thank you very much for the 556 here for the Speak the Truth collab. Yep, so we, we've had a couple conversations. We, uh, ironically... Uh, there are some ties there that we didn't know we had. Uh, working on a couple different things uh, that, that that are going to be all... Sh should be pretty fun to do. Uh, but no, nothing further on that as it stands right now. Uh, Pontus, thank you very much for the 476. Shotgun versus drone. Yeah. I, I mean, it can work. You know, but at that point, if you miss, you're kind of boned. So theoretically, and I actually want to pull up something... I want to pull up something that we watched a little bit earlier that can show that'll show you what your primary should be even if uh you know it's 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 on a man pack of some kind so speaking of drones you guys are actually going to notice something on this bradley here these two antennas this is actually an anti-drone system works uh i want to say out to about 80 meters i don't recall the name of it but it was specifically pointed out by a few analysts. This kind of semi-mobile drone protection suite is what you want to be primarily reliant on, right? So you want to have layers of defense against drones, which is exactly what the United States is planning for, as it, you know, from what I understand, for counter small UAS. You want to have a permanent, semi-permanent, um, and mobile uh you know, RF or electronic warfare type capabilities that provide you this bubble of hopefully protection. And then what you start to have is you start to have kinetic capabilities that are last resorts. Shotguns are at the like way bottom, bottom of bottom, bottom of that, along with shooting at it with your rifle. Can it, ha can it be done? Yes. Is it a primary? No. No, it's not. 
continuing to check in on the support. Uh, Far From Freedom, thanks again for the $5 as well. Guys, that's actually going to be the end of our show. It only took us about an hour. I got one more video to watch. I feel bad about sharing this one with you, but I, I almost pissed myself laughing at this next one. Not quite uh, as mesmerizing as our... Um, as as the T90 turret that I'm totally not about to share with you guys again. Not quite as mesmerizing as this, but I all I can say is I appreciate you. This last video is probably going to make you laugh a little bit, especially those that have had what this kid is about to be eating in front of you. Um, thanks for being here. I'll be checking in with you guys over on the other stream if you want to come and hang out with me for a little bit. I can't talk with this on because I can't I can't not watch it. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it off. Thanks for being here. Uh, we appreciate you very much. We'll be at SHOT Show next week. And I'm hoping to see a few of you on the ground. If you are on the ground and you see Will, please make sure to run up behind him and grab him in a bear hug without him seeing you do that. He really, really, really likes that. Thanks for being here. Enjoy this last video. Keep in mind, um, everybody's problems are relative. And stay informed, guys. Stop crying. Stop crying. Hey, these boys are over there fighting wars every day, living off of that. Do you appreciate what they do? Do you appreciate people who have to eat these? You know what? I had to eat those my first three days down in Florida. I ate them. Do you appreciate that? You ever going to ask me to crack one open again? No. Two big bites. Two big bites got me. <laughs> First of all, I'm, I'm not going away yet because I got to say something. That's one of the good ones. That's basically Chef Boy RD right there, homeboy. All right? Wide open, baby. That's so I, nasty. I just can't stop crying. That's so nasty. Stop. I'm done. Good night. We'll, we'll see you guys on the other stream. Bye-bye.